This is absolutely obscenely lightweight. Were there only three screws on this? Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, already? <laughs> Austin Evans making terrible consumer decisions. This video is sponsored by Visible. Today, I am going to purchase the cheapest gaming PC on Amazon. So I saw a great video by David Does Tech Stuff recently where he found a ridiculous scam of a gaming computer on Amazon. But that was over a year ago. A lot's changed, like graphics cards are now four times as expensive. So let's see what we can find. $600 for a Ryzen 3 and a 550. Okay, that's closer, but I think we can go less than 600. $500 for an Alarco Core i5, eight gigs of RAM, oh, one terabyte hard drive, and a GTX 650? It's a Core i5 2400. That CPU is almost as old as some of the people watching the channel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is weird. A Chewy Corebox Pro desktop mini PC, $400. I'm just gonna say, we're obviously not gonna get this for the system, but this is probably gonna be do better than a lot of systems at $400, if I'm gonna be real with you. Uh-oh, we found one. This is the one that David did, $380. Oh, you know what, it's got, it's got two-star review. What did you do to get a two-star review? Simon says, freeze. As nice as this computer looks, it continues to freeze, forcing me to have to reboot over and over again. Simon says, freeze is probably the best headline for a review I have ever heard in my life. Oh, I found a 4K gaming computer. You ready for your 4K gaming computer? Am I? Am I? What is it? Great for casual mid-end gaming. NVIDIA GeForce 4K certified video card, GT710. I don't think this will run at 4K. If it does, it's gonna be like 30 FPS or something. Oh, I found a Dell gaming computer for $400. And with that, you get a quad core i5, 16 gigs of RAM, 128 gigabyte SSD, and a GT1030. That's like a lot more performance than the other one for $100 more. Oh, okay, hang on. Now this is actually a system that I would actually build. For 450 bucks, we're getting a 240 gig SSD, perfectly reasonable, um, eight gigs of RAM, the bare minimum, and an Athlon 3000G, which is barely enough to be okay. It is not good, but if you lower your expectations and we're buying the cheapest gaming PC on Amazon, this isn't crazy. I think we should get the Athlon system for $450, and we should get the Dell system for $400, and see which one's better. Because I think the Dell is gonna have an advantage in some ways, but it's also gonna be really old. So let's see which of the cheapest gaming PCs on Amazon is actually worth it. Spoiler alert, no. All right, we have now received our supposedly cheapest Amazon gaming PCs. So let's see what we've got, shall we? So to start out with, let's take a look at our full custom $450 gaming PC build. I've never heard of Allied. Game is one, I guess, is the company who makes this. It's actually a really nice looking box. Uh, wow, this thing is tiny. Oh, that's actually kind of adorable. Wow. Dude, I mean, okay, this is like absolutely obscenely lightweight. Were there only three screws on this? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't think you missed anything. You think this is staticky? Maybe? Yeah. Wow, that's so empty. Wow! Wait a whoa, 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 hold on. Oh, there's nothing in here. Oh, man. Okay, well, this took a turn. First of all, this is a Biostar A320MH motherboard. We have a single DIMM of memory, not great, and it is eight gigs of 2666. Yikes. Okay, now here's the part where I'm really scared of. 550 watt Allied branded power supply. So this is their own power supply, but we look on the 12 volt rail, that's 360 watts. This is a cheapo power supply, no doubt. Well, it's neat. <laughs> wow, that's about as neat as we do it. Uh, I found our screw, it's, it's here. So this is the fourth screw for the side panel. It was literally wedged in right here. Also a couple of minor things, now that's a big deal. This plate wasn't really screwed all the way down, which is fine, but if you actually look on top here, you can see that this USB port was actually not installed correctly, or specifically the IO shield, right? There's no way you can actually plug that in. You actually have to pull these and get them out of the way. It's a little bit odd is that they left the power supply switch off by default. So if I plug this thing in and hit the power button, nothing happens. I actually have to come around here and flip that on. What else do we have? 
in the box. January 15th, 2020. Dear Amazon customer, thanks for purchasing an Allied product. So I guess it's been sitting in a box for a year. Got it, okay, cool, that explains a lot. Okay, now why don't we take a look to see what we've got on the Dell side of things. It's probably gonna be both better and worse. Before we check out the Dell, let's see if we got our money's worth out of the $450 Allied Gaming PC. So I'm going to jump onto Amazon and see if I can find as close to the same spec as possible, which normally would mean that of course, this is a terrible deal, but considering just how hard it is to actually get your hands on PC parts in 2021, it might not be that simple. Ah, I found our actual motherboard. Okay, cool. So here's the actual board that we're using in the system. So $60, okay. $32 for RAM, very reasonable. I'm gonna look up the worst power supply I can find. Technically it's 550 watt, but I don't think we're gonna get a good one. $30 power supply. So this is broadly applicable to the supply that's in that system. So a $30 a Rosewell FBM X2, which actually I think is what we used in our $300 build that we did a couple years ago. Okay, so even in today's climate of PC components, this Ally computer is a straight ripoff. This is a $288 system, essentially two thirds the price, and we spent 450 bucks on it. Now, let's take a look to see what's under the hood of the Dell PC. Oh boy, that is significantly heavier. Wow, this looks familiar. Because it's been in every doctor's office and office building in no, the entire No, because face of the this planet. has definitely been in the office before a few times. I'm not entirely sure what happened here. So this is like a little tray for you to put your phone or your keys, or whatever. They covered up like the surface tag, but it's almost like they like repainted this or resurfaced it. You see like these like lines here? I wonder if this was like damaged a little bit and they just tried to like seal it. Yeah, look, see, like this just, this comes up. Oh, whoa. Look at that. Like they like refinished the top of the system. So we have captive screws, which is nice. And a side panel, which thankfully comes right off to reveal. Oh, I didn't have bent it like that. To reveal a very, very basic looking Dell. I'll certainly say the kill management is not super clean, but that's fine. I mean, there's no windows, so you can't really tell. So. The power supply, like I had expected, is much nicer. So it is an 80 plus gold unit, which means that this, even though on paper it's only 290 watts, I guarantee you this power supply is gonna last an years longer than the super cheap unit in the other system. So that's cool. So the, uh, the GT1030 looks hilariously small. I am pretty sure that's a two gig version. It is. So that's the cheapest version of the GT1030. But for the most part, what we're getting are some slightly older components. But these older components are still very capable even in 2021 with an upgrade like an SSD and with like a graphics card. I'm not sure if this is totally worth the $400, but at first glance, I like what I'm seeing here more than I did on the other system, especially considering that this was $50 cheaper. This portion of the video is sponsored by Visible. With Visible, you get unlimited data, calls and texts, even to some other countries, including Canada and Mexico, and you're able to do it all with the power of Verizon's nationwide 5G network. Better yet, you can get all of this for as little as $25 a month using Party Pay. The way it works is once you sign up for Visible, you can start a party, and then you can invite your friends, family members, coworkers, whatever, to join the party. And for each person that joins up to four, you get $5 off, which means that if you have four people in your party, you're only paying $25 a month. And better yet, while you're sharing the savings, you're not sharing the actual bill. Everyone still has to pay their own stuff, which means that all you really get here is that super fast 5G coverage without actually having to pay an arm and a leg for it. You can also get up and running on Visible in literal minutes. Now, of course, if you wanna buy a new phone or you just need a SIM card, Visible will overnight that to you really quickly. But on the other side, if you have a newer iPhone and some Android phones coming soon, you can take advantage of eSIM, which means that right inside the app, you can sign up, get the SIM card, and have your service up and running in literal minutes. So if that sounds cool to you and you wanna get some of that sweet nationwide Verizon 5G network action, definitely be sure to go check out Visible at the link in the description. And huge shout out to Visible for sponsoring this portion of the video. Let's fire up, see what happens. Wow, that's RGB, oh boy. Well, it looks good for a thumbnail. Um, it's a little dark on the inside though, but at least we can now see our handiwork. Um, well, our handiwork, someone's handiwork. I will say, this is certainly not fast at turning on. Okay, we'll just give it a minute. Oh. <laughs> oh, already? <laughs> Inaccessible boot device. What do you mean inaccessible boot device? Uh, what? Is the SSD unplugged or something? Oh, this is 
This is clearly not ending well. Well, I have an RGB button to make me feel better. Whoa! So cool. Okay, trying to load into Windows. It's trying. Nope. Inaccessible boot device. <sighs> what? Austin Evans making terrible consumer I I couldn't decisions? Even scan it. I couldn't even scan it. Let me see if I can get in the BIOS and see if I have any sense for what's going on. Okay, all right, we're in. So, all right, what do we have here? So it shows our 240 gig Patriot SSD, so that's fine, it's clearly showing up correctly. Let's see if we can reset it, see if it works. Now imagine this as the end user. Yeah. Like an end user that doesn't know any better. Yeah. That's rough. All right, so we're gonna just go safe mode with networking. Ah, oh, okay. We have some success, so. Now I just have to figure out what driver it is that's keeping my system from even seeing the SSD. Yeah! Woo! What I love to see is stuff that doesn't work out of the box. All right, so after a BIOS update and swapping out a couple of the drivers, magically the system works. All right, let's see if the Dell fares any better at first boot. The nice thing about this Dell, it did come with the mouse and keyboard, so certainly not nothing. Okay, why does a double A need to be sealed? That seems a little excessive. Wait, just one? Just a single double Wait. A. <laughs> really? Okay, well I hear signs, oh look at that, instantly. Instantly shows up. That's what I like to see. Oh, wait, I mean, that's what I like to see. Immediately, the first thing I noticed, Yeah is you didn't have to reinstall or update the BIOS. <laughs> it's funny, when you plug in a computer and you don't immediately have to install a new BIOS to keep it from blue screening. It's a pretty cool feature. Okay, the Dell system is alive. First question, what do we have under the hood? A Core i5-4570, so it is Haswell. That is a very good sign. So I thought this may have been third gen, which was Ivy Bridge, which would have been totally all right but Haswell was actually a pretty reasonable step up in performance. This CPU is capable of actually a fair bit even today in 2021. All right, so I am much, much happier with the spec of this Dell, but especially considering that this was less expensive and better in every way really besides maybe some single threaded performance and, and, aesthetics. and aesthetics. But besides that, I think we're in good shape here. I'm gonna get some stuff updating. So now let's see exactly how close our cheapest Amazon systems are in performance, starting out with some Cinebench. Now, don't mind the fact that one has a TV and one has a monitor. Should make no difference to the actual performance. We're gonna start out by running a single core benchmark. So even though this has quad cores versus dual cores, even though this should on paper perform better in most scenarios, this will be the test to show if our Athlon processor can keep up. It's kind of like watching paint dry though, if you wait for the render, but uh, it'll finish. Just give it five to seven minutes each. 868 points. So that is the number that the Core i5 has to beat, 801 points. So that's actually not wildly off, especially considering that this CPU is six years older than the one inside the Athlon. So for single thread CPU performance, it is a clear win, not a massive win, but it is a clear win for Amazon Special. Now let's fire up multi-core. This is, I think, a spot where I expect the Core i5 to do better because while they both have technically four cores, realistically, this is just a dual core processor with hyper-threading, where this has four actual proper CPU cores. So even though each core might be slightly slower, having more of them is gonna be helpful. Yeah, not even close. So the Core i5 here inside the Dell pretty much gave us almost perfect scaling. So it's quad core, which means it went 3.9 times faster with four cores running. So the reason why this is relevant is not only for gaming performance, having that quad core CPU really is what you want for any kind of modern title, but also if you wanna throw stuff like video editing at it. Not that either of these systems are gonna be video editing champs, but not only are you gonna have a lot more CPU horsepower on this, but also remember, you've got 16 gigs of RAM versus essentially six gigs on the Athlon. And the Athlon scores 2253. Yeah, that's not even close. So now we're going to be running some graphics tests. 
Now the Athlon processor inside this does have relatively modern specs. The only problem is, even though it is a Vega GPU, it is very small. It's like a Vega 3 or something. This is not gonna go well, right? This is really where you're gonna wanna upgrade this with something a little bit more powerful on the graphics card side. This is clearly a demanding benchmark, right? But that is not what I would consider to be acceptable performance. Now we'll see when we actually get into games. This is gonna probably do okay when you run the games on like low settings and stuff, but not good. Oh, 1,071? Ugh, okay, all right. This is definitely the weakest part of this system. Let's see what the Dell can do, because I will be shocked if it cannot do better than that. 1,071. <laughs> 3,235. So yeah, it's safe to say that the Dell has essentially triple the graphics performance of the more expensive Athlon-based system. Now, is this the be all and end all? No, of course not. You could take a graphics card and install it in here, but at that point, you are so above budget, it's gonna be tough. So I think a good way to test the real world gaming performance here is Fortnite. Yes, yes, I know, we play Fortnite all the time, but it is a very popular game, and Epic does a good job of making sure that Fortnite is technically very demanding on the high end, but also capable of running on low end systems like this. Case in point, the new alpha performance mode. Now, this is actually the first time I've tried it, but essentially uh, the performance mode is all about trying to lower the system requirements as much as possible to make Fortnite playable on even very low end systems. Oh wow, that looks, holy, what is going on here? Woo, that is some potato mode right there. You know what this looks like? It looks like Fortnite running on an older, less powerful phone. Yeah, a little stuttery as I'm dropping. It bounces back and forth. Like right now I'm bouncing between 19 and 40 frames per second. And those textures are super low as well. Like look, look at those stairs, look at those stairs. Like technically this is playable. I'm getting 60 FPS right now, but this just does not look good in any way. Well, I mean, at least the draw distances are, are pretty far, so at least you should be relatively competitive. But I mean, it looks straight up like a PS2 game. On the Dell, it looks like we're gonna be running at 1080p medium. So we're running a little bit closer to, I believe, 720p or so with the actual 3D scale resolution. But I mean, I can immediately tell, not only does the game look far better, we're getting 70, 80 frames per second on the bus, which means that even when we drop, we shouldn't be too far down. I mean, this is not even close, right? We're getting 100 frames per second right now. I mean, it might not be the prettiest, and honestly, I might wanna turn up the resolution just a touch. But yeah, I mean, it is super, super clear to me that the Dell is a much better gaming PC. With the battle settled between these two Amazon gaming PCs, my next task is going to be an even more challenging one. Can I build a better gaming PC from, of all places, Best Buy? Make sure to subscribe and ring -a -ling that ding -a ling bell so you don't miss the next episode of this, um, Saga, we'll, we'll call it a saga. And of course, big shout out to Visible for sponsoring this video. If you want to pay as little as $25 a month for unlimited talk, text, and data, check out the link below and get started with Visible in literal minutes.